Welcome to everybody to today's Avenue webinar. Today we have Margaret Seshuk mm -hmm. talking about using Avenue's language companion. Uh, the new language solutions is based in Ottawa, Ontario. We acknowledge that the head office is on the traditional unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe people. Beyond Ottawa, we have staff working in locations across Canada. New Language Solutions is grateful to have the opportunity to work as a guest in communities and territories across the country. And we honor the stewardship of the many Indigenous peoples who have resided on these lands since time immemorial. We make our acknowledgement as a sign of respect for all Indigenous peoples of Turtle Island, past and present. We accept the true impact of the past and the pain suffered by generations of Indigenous peoples. As an agency that works to support the integration of newcomers into Canadian society and cultures, we resolve to support activities that are inclusive of Indigenous peoples. We will make our best efforts to address a history of injustice to First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples. We encourage our frontline staff and clients to discover whose traditional territories they live on, and pause to reflect on the hospitality shown to us as guests in these territories. Thank you very much. Thanks, Joan. So let me just get started with my presentation. And in this presentation, uh, I am going to talk about, let me just see, okay. I'm going to talk about the, um, um, the language companion, also known as the binder. And I'm going to uh, speak about both versions, the digital and the print, and how you can use the content of that language companion in your course in, in uh, for teaching purposes, just to, um, just to add that to your repertoire of um, skill building activities and also how you can use that language companion and its content specifically, the CLB can do statements to introduce the concepts of the CLB and PBLA. Um, and using those uh, will help learners to, uh, and encourage learners to develop their self-directed reflective learning. Um, I'm going to demonstrate also how you can use ready to use, ready made e-activities from PBLA units available in Course Builder. So my first question for you would be, and this is something that John is going post in a moment in a poll, is how often do you use the language companion in your course? And you can choose one of the three answers. Um, all of the time, sometimes and never. And which version do you use, digital or print? So you can answer the poll right now. So most people said sometimes, <laughs> one person said all the time. And print, right? So you never thought about using the digital version. Yeah, okay, perfect. So I'm just going to address both in my presentation. Okay, let me just go there. Okay, so let me get started with um, the first a brief explanation of what a language companion is. So language companion is this document that was published by CCLB in order to assist uh, learners and instructors in transitioning them in uh, into the PBLA process. So it's about um, acquainting them with the PBLA concepts and PBLA processes uh, based on uh, CLBs and all, all the concepts of adult learning, self-directed, reflective, based on tasks. Language Companion was originally published as a, um, as a binder, quite a clunky and big binder with which which arrived unassembled. So instructors and learners had to put everything put together, which was a good language task in itself. And um, a modern version of a Language Companion is available in Avenue as a flipbook. So I'll explain that later when we take a look at it. 
uh, language companion has um, a few sections. The first section that is quite prominent is the uh, section dedicated to CLB, um, a, a series of can-do statements for uh, the stage for the group of learners that the, the um, language companion is addressed to. Uh, so there are originally in print, language companion came in three versions. The first one was for CLB literacy learners. The second one was for um, CLB one to four stage one learners. And the third one was for CLB five to eight learners. And um, the remainder of the uh, binder was dedicated to um, different resources related to English learning. So th these would be resource sections called My Canada, Where I Live, Handful English, and recently a new section on Francophone communities in Canada was added. Um, also, language the Language Companion Binder had a space for learners' portfolio. This was the place where learners were supposed to insert their artifacts, collect them, review them regularly in preparation for their final assessment and progress conference. The digital version includes all these resources and all the sections that were originally part of the print language companion. The setup is uh, slightly different and I'll demonstrate that in a moment, just so you have a better sense how it responds to the online environment. So, um, as I said before, in this presentation, you will learn about all these ideas about accessing the digital versions, using the ready to use e activities uh, from PBLA units, and I'll explain why they're PBLA units, using different resource sections, using can do statements, and all of this with the idea um, that would help learners engage in self directed reflective learning. Okay, let me just skip that slide and I'm just going to go here and now I can start looking at this. So, um, as I said before, the print version versus digital version, there are many classes still that uh, combine both the online and in-class face-to-face modality. So the print version might be suitable for those classes where learners still have access to the actual hard copy of the binder. The print version might come very, maybe very useful to use with the CLB learners and learners with very low digital skills. Learners at CLB 1 and 2 may also find it useful to be able actually to use the printed copy of the pages that are included in the language companion. In order to uh, take a full advantage of the um, of the language companion and its content, it is important that you start by demonstrating the setup and the use of the language companion at the very beginning of the course, maybe when you start using it, but also throughout the course. And I'll explain the situations when you can actually go back and forth to the language companion and its content. You can use it also, the pages that are in there as the activity resource, the CLB resource, and refer to it on an ongoing basis. And if you notice that your learners at the low um, CLB levels feel comfortable and are familiar with the content, you can move them on to the digital version if you're still teaching uh, in the online uh, modality. Now, if you are teaching the class that is fully online, you may not have access to the print version of the companion, you can just go through exactly the same steps, demonstrate access and setup, which is slightly different than the print version. Use it again as an activity resource, as a quick reference to find some basic information. Use it to develop under learners' understanding of the CLB and refer to it back and forth when you actually conduct assessment or prepare learners for assessment for self-reflection and for peer feedback. And use it again to build that self-directed independent learning skills. Um, to get started with Avenue's Language Companion, because I'm not going to demonstrate how to use the hard copy, the content is exactly the same, it's identical. I'm just going to show you how you could actually access it an Avenue. So, um, just move that around, maybe 
see here at the bottom. So as you can see, um, Avenue has the language companion available on its homepage. It's right here under the binder. This was a shorter version of the name for it that can appear here. And you can access it simply by clicking on it. And as you can see, the digital version here has all the sections that the regular hard copy binder would have. So it has the big sec section called My Portfolio. And then it has Canadian language benchmarks, My Canada, where I live, Helpful English, and Far Phone Communities in Canada, which is the latest um, section added recently. Now, as you can see, there's no division into levels here yet because as when you open the binder here, the first landing page is your portfolio. So um, that's why there's no division here. However, if you're interested in accessing the sections at any given level, this is how you would do it. You would basically go into the section that you're interested in and then select it here, right? So let's say I'm interested in looking at the uh, uh, CLB124, Canadian Language Benchmarks. I want to see the can do statements. So this is the flip book. The idea of the flip book is that it replicates the book. It's uh, like a PDF version of the book that is made flippable. So you can turn the pages. You can uh, zoom in and out. You can enlarge uh, the, okay, let me just, oop, this is a pretty fast process. Let me just go down. So you can, um, you can see thumbnails here. Um, and just go to any specific place, place that you want that you can locate here. You can also enlarge it slightly and just use this bar to zoom in and out uh, to make it easier to read uh, for your learners. Um, and as you can see, you can still flip the pages, just go to different sections, right? And it works the same way for all levels. If you want to get out of that particular section, you will need to reset to go back to the original setup of that binder. So let me just go back here to our presentation. So I think it's also important for the learners to understand that there are different uh, that the binder is organized. Um, the content of the of the binder is organized by CLB levels. It doesn't necessarily mean that they cannot access. Um, the CLB level that they're not in. If, for example, there are CLB4 um, learners in your class and they were curious to see what is in CLB5, they can definitely access that version of the binder and go and check out the content in those resource files. You can, it's important that your learners get a chance to practice accessing various sections. Uh, it takes some practice for them to be able to flip pages it also depends on the device that they are using. I imagine it might be quite difficult to use it on the phone um, because not all the functions may be visible at the same time, but it's still something that can be done and it can be practiced. With some practice, uh, learners can actually still have a good learning experience. And what you can also do is use activities that are based on the content of the language companion. You can develop your own or you can uh, use ready-made ones that are available in the PBLA units that I'm going to show you in a moment. Okay. So as I mentioned, the uh, ready-to-use activities that are based on the language companion are hosted in, are included in the PBLA units that are located in the course builder. And I'm just going to uh, show you the, uh, um, some of these. So what you can do is go to the course builder um, while you're in Avenue and just preview the course, the, uh, the units that are available. You would go to the themes and categories listing and go to orientation to PBLA and Avenue. And when I click here, you will see that I get, it's just one page of units. So it's not too many. It's not going to take you a lot of time to go through them. There are just two first two ones to just orientation to Avenue. So you can skip that. And then the rest of the units are dedicated to um, 
PBLA resources and the language companion is one of those resources. So you can just go in and, and uh, do some um, and just, just see what they are, uh, try them out and see how suitable they are for the learners in your class. I'm just going to open one of the units just to give you a sense what they could include. So for example, this, um, this uh, unit is called Orientation to BBLA, CLB124, and it has everything including the instructor guide, the whole section dedicated to the language companion itself, setting it up, and sections of the language companion and some kind of um, quiz that would uh, check their understanding of what the content is about. Um, there's a section dedicated to the Canadian language benchmark and then the assessment, its processes and uh, procedures and what it really what is involved in the uh, PBLA protocol. There, these sections include a lot of vocabulary practice exercises and comprehension exercises. So learners become familiar with the language of the language companion, assessment, um, CLBs. So the whole assessment, ongoing assessment, formative and summative assessment process becomes more user-friendly and it's just easier to manage by, to be managed by the learner. So this is just one example. I'm going to demonstrate the specific activities in a moment. Let me just go back to my presentation here. So the way you would probably want to work with the unit like that is request the unit for your sandbox rather than for your course. And when you have it in your sandbox, this will allow you to look around, test and try out some of the activities and decide which ones you want to do in your class. You can also modify the activities in your sandbox and change them just to meet the, your learners' needs better than these activities that are designed for the whole stage, which is CLB 1 to 4, which is quite a big range. You can also use those activities in face-to-face -face class or assign them for asynchronous com uh, completion by the learner. What does it mean that you can try out a few comprehension questions or a few vocabulary items, exercises in class just to model their use and then assign them for asynchronous, for learners independent uh, completion. However, it doesn't necessarily mean that they need to be done as an H5P. You can do them also in the format of the forum or just a quick quiz or a questionnaire. They can be open-ended questions as well to allow for more input from learners. And I'm just going to demonstrate a few examples in a moment. And it's also important to review that. So when learners access the language um, companion and they use some of the resources, just get their feedback on how did it go? Was it difficult? What did they learn from that? Was the process helpful in any way? And so on. Um, Let's move on in here. So a few ideas on how you can use the language companion content with the CLB literacy learners and also CLB one to two learners. And I, 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 I put these two groups of learners together because they share so many of their challenges and issues they may come up with um, when dealing with the digital environment and also the new language concepts. So, um, you can use the language companion either as the whole class, and in that case, you would demonstrate how to use it. Best done in in-person classes. You can also do it in a web conference. Um, you can basically show and demonstrate multiple times. The repetition is really important for learners at this uh, in, in this group. Um, and maybe elicit steps from learners if it is possible. For example, if you're teaching it in a in-person class, you can use a projector or a smart board to display, to show, to uh, project the image of the binder and you can demonstrate how you would access. You can ask learners, where do I click next? Where do I go after that? You can also ask learners to come to the board, to the smart board or even to the, the, the uh, projected image and point to places where they would click 
or where they would tap to get to the next step. You can also have learners give instructions to the learner who is at the board so the learner can perform the task and show to everybody how it is done. And I guess you would need to go back to that kind of exercise quite often because at this level, it's really necessary. What you can also use is the table of contents in the binder. And I'm just going to show you in a moment because each section of the, uh, sorry, I was going to go to the binder. So each section of the companion, language companion starts with the table of contents. And that table of contents can be also used as the real life task um, basis um, to practice different skills, such as scanning the page, uh, learning the number, uh, the, uh, learning the numbers, um, finding things in a, on a formatted page like this one, uh, spelling the words that are in here, or located the items based on the questions that are asked. So again, it's quite um, it's quite a good tool that the learners can use. What you can also do if you want to use any of the pages from the language companion in a digital format, you can right click on a page and you can download this one particular page. It's going to be saved as a PDF and then you can display only that page without having, so the view is going to be quite different. It's going to be more crisp. It's going to be bigger. You can do more things with it and learners will have a better, um, um, a better learning experience. Also, uh, what you can do is print that page and use it as a handout. Let me just go back here. Um, so as I said, you can use table of contents to develop understanding of formatted texts, numbers, titles, spelling, using capital letters, and so on. Then you can use the selected pages to practice reading out loud and practice spelling, as well as practice copying. So you may have learners copy um, the, the title of the page and the number, for example. Uh, you can have different types of questions that would require finding that information and copying that information from the page that you have selected. And you can also review key vocabulary items using the images that appear on those pages. Now, one of the strategies that is recommended, I think it's in the, in the CCLB modules, is using the uh, language companion when starting a new theme or topic just to preview the information that might be relevant for that theme or topic. And just to give you a sense where it could be is when you go to um, My Canada, My Canada section has, as you can see, quite a range of topics related to settlement themes, such as holidays, people and languages, provinces and territories working in Canada, finding a home, uh, homes in Canada, education, healthcare, and services for emergencies, and so on and so on. So let's say if you're interested in, if you're going to start a theme on um, volunteering, you'll just find that page in here, which is page 22, uh, go to page 22, and just work on that with your learners. You can ask them questions, look at the pictures, what are the four places where you could volunteer? And then learners can respond with the vocabulary items that are here, right? So you can use these in a different, in different ways. Um, let's go back in here. Uh, you can also um, ask them, look at the section that is, let's say we're going to work on a housing uh, theme or topic. Um, let's look at that section and see if we see any new vocabulary that we are going to use during that theme or topic. So there are different strategies that you can actually apply in here. Uh, let's go back to our presentation. So now this is something that you would do as a whole class. Um, now individually or in pairs, as I said, you can use to practice copying and writing key vocabulary items. This is something that the learners can do in their notebooks. Um, or you can, they can have a, a Google Doc uh, file saved and, and used for their note-taking and for 
um, vocabulary um, um, listings available for the whole theme or topic. You can also use the activities that explore the content of the language companion that are already available in the in the um, um, in Avenue, as I showed before. And there are different types of those activities. A few of them that I just listed here are a scavenger hunt. So you can ask learners to look for the specific items um, on a page or in a section. I'm going to show them in a moment. You can ask them to do the same thing, but just provide, complete the sentence with the information that they find on a specific page. Or you can do the matching exercise where they have to match the image with the, um, uh, with the topic, or maybe they have to match the, um, the subtopic with the name of the section. So that means they have to actually go to the section, explore its content, and then complete that exercise. So some exercises, some activities are like that are included in the H5Ps that are already in the uh, course builder. Okay, going back again to the course, I should have gone here, it's okay, to that course builder and going to that um, CLB124. Now, and when you go to the uh, sections of the language companion in here, I wanted to point out that these, um, these H5Ps usually have, usually come with short videos. These videos were produced um, based on the hard copy of the language companion. But as you can see, the language companion content and pages and setup is, is pretty, uh, pretty much reflected in the digital version. So you can use these. And the videos come with the transcript. Um, I'm not going to show the video right now, but the videos are also available on YouTube. So what you could even do, you could copy the link, um, set up a new activity. Um, if you want to have more questions about a given section or you want any other um, additional practice, vocabulary practice or comprehension practice included with that, video. You can also take a look at the transcript. Videos are really short. They're maximum two minutes. Uh, usually it's around a minute and several seconds. But as you can see, they are just um, written in such a way that they are appropriate for low CLB levels. And each video is followed by some, um, by some uh, questions that refer and make learner go to the language companion and check the page number or just the how many pages are in the section and so on and so on. So this is the scavenger hunt that you could do with your learners. And similar types of questions are included in throughout. Just so you, you can see the types of exercises are in here. So the learner would just go and explore the, the section and just see how many topics are under shopping, what's on the page of 30, on, on page 35, what is the title of the page? So the learner actually has to go there and then type the, the names in here. So it's all very practical. And again, it's about the language more than anything else. Now, I think at the very low level, sorry, just wanted to go back. At the very low level, CLB literacy and CLB one to learners, I think it's perfectly okay for learners to use, to allow them to use digital assists. And I mean here, for example, uh, translation tools, translation apps, uh, pronunciation apps, if they wanna, um, if they wanna use those just to, to hear how to pronounce a new word uh, or to get the exact meaning of the words or the sentences that are included in the text. So it's perfectly fine to use that. They help them with understanding. And I think for CLB literacy learners, they are very, very helpful. Now with CLB three plus learners, and I put here C three plus, not just stage two, because at CLB three and four learners have a better grasp uh, of the language that is included in, um, in the language uh, companion. And also they, they tend to develop their digital slightly better and faster. You could, uh, again, demonstrate how to use it in a web conference or in uh, in a face-to-face -face session. 
I wanted to say that what you can also do um, if you want to make sure that learners know how to access the language companion, you can you can quickly record a screencast for your learners. Um, and if you feel like it's a daunting task and you don't want to use another tool, you can you can create a very quick screencast in in Zoom. You basically go into the Zoom meeting, um, display the web page that you want to demonstrate, turn recording on, um, demonstrate how to um, what demonstrate how to perform the task, how to get to a, a tab and then the section and uh, finish recording. Um, and then when you save it, it's going to be saved as an MP4 file and it's done. You don't need any additional tool to do that. And the quality done in Zoom is pretty good. So you could use that. Um, and then you can, if you have these screencasts done, you can do it in, even for a single step or for two steps, how to access something. Uh, it also is good to have that when you have new learners joining in your class in the middle of the course and you still want them to be able to uh, catch up and to be able to do the activities that you have done in your class with your class so far, they will be able to watch them and do them. Now you can use again with the higher CLB level learners, you can use these ready-made activities to explore the content because there is the unit for CLB 5 plus um, that explores the language companion. You can use these activities in a web conference again or in a face-to-face -face session. You can use just the ideas from these activities. It doesn't mean that they actually have to go to H5P and do it. You can just have learners even think of the question that they want to ask to other learners and then set them up in groups and have one group prepare a set of five questions for another group. And then the other group would do the same thing for the first group. And then this way, both groups are engaged. The learners have to get to know the content of the language companion and um, they have to cooperate and formulate the questions so there's a lot of language involved in there. You can also set up forum activities to discuss content and related issues. So you can set up a forum activity with the question, post the question there and have le learners answer. It can be about the content of the page. It can be about how to complement the content, where else they can get more resources of the vocabulary or grammar and so on and so on. And again, use uh, the content when starting a new theme or topic to preview the relevant information. I just wanted to say that two useful tutorials are already on Avenue uh, and you can use them with your learners. So there is a PDF file. It's called Binder Language Companion Viewing Tips and it's under help. And you can also access the viewing the language companion video on YouTube. Again, if you go to the Avenue YouTube channel, you'll find it there. Or you can just type in language companion and these two files will pop up and you will see them. So they're, um, they're just uh, appropriate for learners. They're visual so a learner can explore them on their own. Now, using the CLB section, in the companion, in the language companion. This is something that I wanted to address separately, not together with the other resources, because this section is really important as it can help you uh, encourage learners to explore their language proficiency, what it really is, what are the CLB levels, what the, how does that translate into the practical use of the language. Also, have them explore that section so they can understand the task-based approach better. So basically what I would do in any class is explore the can-do statements in the CLB section per CLB level. If your class has learners with CLB one and two, have learners go to that section and check what that CLB level means in any given skill and see if this is what they really can do. Ask them questions about it and have them understand how these can-do statements relate to the tasks that they perform in daily life. You can also ask them to take a look at the level up 
of their current CLB level so they can actually understand what they are working towards to. And then this will also make that connection of the CLB connection with the tasks much better and much clearer to the learner. You can refer to the CLB before assessments, learner self-assessments, learner reflections, uh, peer feedback, and also before progress conference. You can have learners look at the listings of the CLB competencies translated into can-do statements and have them, can you do it well? Not just can you do it? Because I think in most cases, the learner says, oh yeah, I know, I can, I can greet another person. But how well can you do that? How can you demonstrate that? How many sentences are you able to say to do that? How do you convey that message? And so on. And you can also, again, set up forum activities for classroom discussion and sharing ideas, um, especially at higher levels, learners will be able to do that. Now, you can also set up forum discussions with, um, with a discussion around what it means to be, to be learning in a task-based approach. I just wanted to show you one of the videos. And again, I'm referring to the ready-made activities that are included in the course builder. Uh, let me just show you here again in the course uh, builder. Um, I think it was this one. I'm sorry, I have too many tabs open. I'm just going to close one of them. So I'm just going to go here to this orientation. And as you can see, the orientation course for PBLA CLB 5A is a little bit longer than um, for CLB one four, which is understandable. It has more vocabulary practice and it's a little bit more detailed. But as you can see here, we have the CLBs and can do statements. And in here, we have just the basic practice of, of the understanding of what is included in that section. I also wanted to show you that there is a um, there is a dedicated section that presents the concept of the Canadian language benchmarks and can do statements. And it's in here. And again, similarly to the lower level, it starts with the video, which is a very short video. And then it has some questions. Then there's another video and there are more questions. So the video that I wanted to show in here is the video that I'm not going to I'm not going to make you watch that video. I just wanted to say that this video, similarly to the other videos used in that, um, maybe I'll go in here, in that, I'm just sorry. Um, it's based on learners' experiences. So basically what the learner does, they listen to somebody talk about their experience learning in a link class and, um, understanding can do statements and how they translate into their proficiency level and how they translate into what they learn in the classroom so it's not just grammar or just vocabulary but it is all about the tasks that they perform in real life and the way you could use these videos is you could post that video in a forum so they can hear how somebody talks about learning uh, their learning experience and um they could uh for example, ask learners to share their goals based on their can-do statements for their level, or they can talk about what they can already do well and how they're going to improve um, throughout the course that they're taking, and so on. Uh, now, you can also use the language companion to introduce other PBLA concepts, not just a CLB. And this is what the last part of my presentation is dedicated to. So again, um, there are many PBLA concepts that may be new to the learners in your class, um, especially to lower level learners. And I think the best starting point for that would be to introduce the key vocabulary, things like portfolio, assessment, feedback, task, provide a lot of practice. Um, based on that vocabulary and a lot of resources again are available in the um, in the course builder in those PBLA um, units. You can again use the video 
in the forum just to demonstrate that task-based assessment example and demonstrate accessing portfolio and reviewing artifacts just to um, make learners familiar with what is in there, how it is set up, and how they can engage in using it. I'm just going to take you here now um, just to show it in a binder. So when introducing binder and then going in here, uh, this is the instructor view right now because I don't really have a portfolio on Avenue, but this is just to show you that again, it's a similar uh, setup and I'm sure you're familiar if you already teach classes on Avenue, um, a similar setup is slightly um, in different order than it should be. Um, but still it's, it's manageable. You can just uh, help learner understand how they can move from one tub to another that this is just listening and this is going to be just reading and this is going to be just writing if there's any. They can go to um, their course if they're taking more than one course. They can check their artifacts by course. They can organize them from the oldest to the newest and so on. And I think by doing this, you really want to make sure that learners understand that this is their responsibility to manage the artifacts in their um, in their portfolio, in their e-portfolio. There will be, I know that it is the instructor responsibility to review these quite often and provide feedback and work. Um, with the with the learners on those, but the learners also need to be aware that this is their collection. This is something that they are responsible for, and the results that are displayed through these artifacts really determine how their proficiency is being assessed by the instructor. Um, so again, you can demonstrate accessing the e-portfolio and reviewing artifacts using those short screencasts that you can again post for the learners who are new to your course and watch them at any time. And it's especially important for low CLB levels. Learners need a lot of repetition and a lot of going back and forth just to making sure just to make sure that they are able to perform these tasks on their own. And I think it's also important to engage learners in reflecting on their learning, it doesn't need to be done formally the way PBLA requires that. It doesn't really need to, invo to, to involve filling out the form or responding to questions all the time. It can be as informal as posing a question um, or just having learners work in Paris and just say, okay, you have two minutes, just share how you feel about the task we have just completed. Was it too difficult? Was it too easy? Would you like to practice more of the same thing and so on? So the learners can actually think about um, how they are learning. Um, now in higher levels, in higher CLB levels, you can introduce the PBLA concepts in a very similar way. And again, you can do, you can use the same tools. So I put here again, develop vocabulary. It's going to be more advanced vocabulary, more complex and more abstract especially for stage two learners. You can use the videos that are included in the um, course build or PBLA related units. You can review how to access ePortfolio and view artifacts again, because we know that learners may have a high level of proficiency, language proficiency, but the digital skills may not be at the same level. And engage learners in reflecting on their learning regularly again. They can do it in small groups, they can do it in pairs, and it doesn't need to be formal as it is done in the PBLA uh, format. It will also help you inform your teaching. So if, the, um, if learners indicate that they would like to do more of some activities or just practice more of certain language items, this, will, this can direct you and just inform your uh, future lessons. Now, it is important that you do these PBLA-related activities, and I mean looking at the um, uh, portfolio content and just reviewing it and assessing it um, with the learner or allowing them to do it on their own quite regularly. I think it should be part of your teaching routine as well, because that will help you shift that responsibility onto the learner. Um, 
and also do all the um, activities quite regularly at the regular interval. So, for example, if you finish the topic or theme, and I know everybody does that when you do some kind of a formative assessment, go back to the portfolio, have the learners uh, look at the uh, at the content of the portfolio by skill, for example, and check in regularly through questions. So, for example, you can have learner look at their e-portfolio and say, how many artifacts do you already have in your speaking folder? And then, okay, when you look at that folder, which artifact is your best? Which one is your least successful? And why do you think it is? And which artifact are you proud of and why? What were the items that you did really, really well? So learners can actually do that and reflect on what went well and what didn't go that well and needs more work or needs improvement. Um, and again, this as well can inform your teaching and help you in planning your future lessons. So just to recap uh, and just briefly wrap it up, just to say what this was about was it is important to introduce the language companion the same way you would do it with the hard copy. Um, so in Avenue digital version, um, it is important to introduce how to access the digital version of the language companion, how to navigate it, and how to preview the content and what content is actually there. Explore the content through activities. They can be done online as H5P or as a form, or they can be completed in class in a very informal way, but just again, will provide an opportunity for the, learner, for the learner to become familiar with the content and see that a lot of information they can um, access on their own independently, not necessarily in class. And the learner also needs to know that they can access that section at any point in their course. It, it, they don't need the direction from the instructor to be able to use that. Now, use the CLB section to help learners understand their proficiency level looking by looking at um, can-do statements. Engage learners in reviewing and managing their e-portfolios on a regular basis and foster their reflective learning, their self-directed learning. So help them manage their e-portfolios on their own, help them take responsibility for their learning and become more engaged, not just being on the receiving end. And this is the end of my slide presentation. I can see that there are quite a few um, chat responses. So um, if you have any questions, uh, maybe I can address them right now. John, oh. could I ask you to, um, to see Hi, the questions? Yes. Yeah. Uh, you can see the chat, right? Um. Uh, I okay, can see so I, I I can just mm -hmm. summarize the chat. You uh mm -hmm. you brought up so many different aspects of of this topic. Uh, people who commented really were agreeing and expanding on your ideas. Uh, there mm -hmm. are no specific questions, unless I'm wrong. You can correct me, uh, audience. But uh, it looks I can't believe how comprehensive this presentation was. I really have uh, learned so much, and I'm sure. People, when they're watching the archive of this, will will be very appreciative of, of your efforts. Thank you very much. So okay, thank you. I yeah. think if, like Margaret uh, asked, if anybody has questions, you can turn your mics on and we can, we, she can answer your mm -hmm. questions. I would so just like to question. say thank you so much. I would just like to say thank you, Margaret, so much. I really enjoyed it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yes, thank you, That's Margaret. It was very informative. I really wish Avenue would put the binder in the same order, like about me, listening, speaking, reading, writing, other, because with lower levels, that is mm -hmm. so important because we teach them to read left to right. And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, this isn't the same. And I'm like, yeah, I know. So it's frustrating at times. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know. I completely understand. Uh, and I'll tell you this, because the binders have been populated, it seems like a small task to just move those tabs around, but it's not because we've we've talked, you know, I've I've talked to the developers and they said it, it's a huge task to actually do that now at this point. 
because there's so many students. So it's not that simple, but maybe in the future, let's hope. Yeah. Because there's always room for improvement. So, yeah. Yeah. And also you can keep a copy of the chat, Margaret. There's three dots. And yeah. if you click on mm -hmm. those three dots at the bottom and click save, mm -hmm. you can have mm -hmm. a copy of that chat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect. Thank Did you. Did you get that? Thank you. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So that's stuff I've learned along the way because I didn't know anything about Zoom before. Uh, I know. But that H5P yeah, yeah. course I gave uh, with integrating technology uh, really helped me learn a lot about mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. This was yeah. all pretty daunting at the beginning of the pandemic. Still is yeah. sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I, that's true. That's true. Because, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I was using computers. I'm my pioneer, but there's so much to learn. It's unreal. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. with AI, it's even... <laughs> yeah. so much more it's going to be more challenging that's true okay any specific questions about anything uh else thank you so much it was very informative and thank yeah you. everything you said is pretty much you nailed it i mean that is what's mm -hmm. going on in the classroom so yeah yeah it's something it's i think it to to address again the repetition it's you know if you teach oh. a lower level class it's it's very, it's a big part of, of the lesson is just going back and especially with literacy learners. Yeah, most of mine are. Um, and so yeah. we've spent just on that first part, we didn't even get to the benchmarks. We won't do that till after March break. Mm -hmm. um, it's taken all week. And it's like going yeah. to the board, demonstrating, like some of them didn't even realize they were copying off each, each other, like one would find the answer. It's like I'm watching this as it's unfolding. And I'm like, No, 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 wait, you have to read the binder. It's not just, you know, like, you got to know how to find stuff. So when I was doing That's that, right, that activity you showed it, it was really quite interesting. Put it that yeah. way. I mean, a lot of them, and then they finally understood when they went to do it themselves. Because uh, yeah. I let them do it themselves after it's been modeled and worked on in class and all together, they understood and they could do it and yeah. find the answers themselves. And they felt really great. That's, so that's thank great. You. That's great. Thank you very much. Thank again. you so much. This was and great. Yeah, thank you for spending the afternoon here. Thank you. Thank you, John, for your help.